Is Jeff McNeil about to get benched for Luis and Hela Cunha? I'll talk about that and another Mets victory on today's show. You are Locked On Mets, your daily New York Mets podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello to all you uh, amazing Mets fans. You're watching Locked On. That's part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Ryan Finkelstein. If you want to find any of my work, follow me on X at Finkelstein Ryan. You can also find some of my writing at JustBaseball.com, where I work as the managing editor. This episode is brought to you by Prize Picks, the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Go to prizepicks.com slash locked on MLB and use the code Owen Lowercase. Locked on MLB for a first deposit match up to $100. Now, the New York Mets pretty much played the exact same game on Tuesday night as they did on Monday night. Great pitcher's duel between a couple of lefties. The Mets are behind early. They come back. They tie it. Goes to extras. And eventually, the floodgates open, and the Mets win in convincing fashion. This one, at least, did not have a bullpen meltdown to discuss, but a really solid game, and a lot happened not only in this game, but also in Syracuse, where Luis and Helicuna was pulled before making his last at-bat for a pinch hitter, which will lead us to a lot of speculation in the next segment. But let's focus on the big league club for now and what happened against the Nationals. Sean Manaya, a great start. All of a sudden, with a tax bullpen, the New York Mets are getting length out of their starting pitching, which is what they desperately needed. You had Severino give you seven on Sunday. You had David Peterson give you six and a third on Monday. And now Sean Manaya goes seven against the Nationals. Really strong start. Allowed two runs on five hits, two walks, five strikeouts. One of those runs was unearned. The first one he allowed was earned. That was in the bottom of the third. Gave up a double off the wall. Harrison Bader tried to make a leaping catch into the wall. Didn't make the catch and also seemed to be a little bit shaken up after the play. It was Due to a, an abundance of caution, they said that they pulled him from the game. And after the game, he said he should be good to go tomorrow. But it was a little bit of a scary moment. And that runner, uh, Jacob Young, was able to score on a base hit later that inning. Young scored again in the fifth inning as he drew a leadoff walk. Shamanai got a strikeout. Then Pete Alonzo made an error that put runners at the corners. Manai got a double play ball or at least a ground ball. But they couldn't turn two just a second too short. That allowed a run to come in. But Manaya still was able to get out of that inning and just overall really cruised in this game. And also shout out to the defenders behind him. Uh, Tyrone Taylor made a couple of really nice catches. One of them to end the seventh inning where I don't know if it quite would have gotten out, but a leaping catch into the wall in center field at the year place. Bader he made another catch in right field. That was really nice as well. Uh, Iglesias uh, flashing the lever. Mark Fientos, Lindor, just a good game all around. Lindor did make an error. Later in the game, didn't come back to bite the Mets. And Vientos had one that got stuck in his glove. Um, this was all when Jose Budo was on the mound to get you through the final two innings. But let's talk about the offense. So they're trailing two to nothing. Top of the sixth, Francisco Lindor hits a solo home run, his 14th of the year. That got the Mets a little bit closer. And in the top of the eighth inning, Lindor hit a one-out double, his 25th double of the year. Brandon Nimmo, who came in for Bader and – Bader was batting in his spot in the lineup, so it allowed Nimmo to be right back in that two-hole. He drove in Lindor with a base hit, so that was a big, big knock to tie the game. Budo came on in the eighth inning, and for those of you who aren't aware, Jose Budo uh, was promoted to the big league club, and they said he will be pitching out of the bullpen for now, although because he just had this outing, there is a world where if the Mets need a sixth starter because Christian Scott's in the rotation, he could still be in line to, to do that for the Mets, although he threw less than 30 pitches in this one, and I would love to see Budo get right back out there in a day or two because he looked really good in this game. Uh, he In the eighth inning, got a fly out, then he gave up a hit, but that was the one that got stuck in Mark Vientos' glove, so it really could have been an out. And then right after that, he got a double play ball. So uh, really good stuff from Budo, keeping the ball on the ground. Ninth inning, leadoff walk to James Wood. James Wood course the top prospect the nationals have that got promoted on monday and wood is a speedster so he tried to steal second francisco alvarez good throw that maybe i don't know if it quite beat him it got to the bag at about the same time but james wood just a bad dive into second came off the bag 
easy out for the Mets. Uh, Lindor then made an error uh, with two outs, but Budo got Jacob Young to strike out, and that got the game into extras. Now, in extra innings, Jose Iglesias came up to lead things off with the ghost runner on second, and he hit a double. Huge knock for the Mets to give them a lead. Jeff McNeil comes up with a chance with a runner on second to get a base hit and extend that lead. And what does he do? First pitch, fastball inside, not a strike, swings at it, pops it up to the catcher. He's out on one pitch. Lindor then grounded out, so you had two outs, Iglesias on second. There was some question about right, who's going to pitch. Daniel Nunez was warming up in the bullpen to take Budo's spot there and you know, pitch in a one-run game with a man on second, starting things off. That was sort of uh, what the Mets were setting themselves up for, and then all of a sudden, the floodgates really opened up again. Brandon Nemo doubled in Iglesias. Mark Vientos singled in Nemo. They pinch ran, put Ben Gamlin for defense, I guess, in particular, to slide Iglesias over to third, McNeil is second in the following inning, and to allow Gamble to run for Vientos. Didn't really need to do that because Pete Alonso hit a two-run homer to make it 7-2 Mets. I would have liked to see Budo stay in there and preserve Nunez, but I think what really happened here is Nunez already got hot. So I think from Carlos Mendoza's perspective, he probably had already burned Nunez for the following day anyway. So why have him potentially come in with you know more traffic on the bases than just the ghost runner? Well, why, why make it harder on you, allowing Budo to try to get you through it if you'd already burned Nunez anyway? And then if Budo does give up a couple hits, well, now he's coming into a more high-stress situation anyway. So while it would have been great to see Budo just finish it out, and I think in the future, in some of those situations, he absolutely could, it also made some sense to just allow Nunez to pitch, and he got the job done. The Mets pick up their second straight victory against the Nationals. Well, actually, their, what, their fifth straight victory against the Nationals to start off this season, uh, but their second win in a row here after losing that series to the Astros. And they're now right back to being over 500. Hopefully, they can maintain that and really create some separation by finishing off this series strong. And they might have some reinforcements coming. Could Luis and Helicuna join the big league club? And could Jeff McNeil be relegated to the bench and no longer be force-fed starts? I'm going to talk about that in the next segment. First, though, a word from our sponsors. This episode of Locked On Mets is brought to you by Booking.com. Booking. Yeah, with summer travel heating up, especially travel for baseball games, it's a time to explore those U.S. cities you've always secretly wanted to learn about. Yes, we're talking about your rival cities. I went out to Washington, D.C. for the last time the Mets faced the Nationals, and I booked through Booking.com. Had a great time checking out that ballpark for the first time, enjoying the city. If you want to check out the Mets in D.C. for the final two games of this series or – Pittsburgh is a beautiful city to go to, particularly that ballpark where you can see the skyline and behind the, the facade of the ballpark. If you're sitting behind home plate, you look out over right field. It's an awesome place to check out a game. And with hotels, bed and breakfasts, vacation rentals, resorts, and so much more on booking.com, you might just find your perfect stay, even in your baseball rival city. The right stay can make you a fan of any U.S. city, even your rival. So book today on booking.com on the site or on the Booking.com app. Today's episode is also brought to you by Game Time. We already got you covered there for the resort that you might stay at. How about how you're actually getting into the ballpark on your next baseball road trip? Game Time is the place to go to get tickets to all of the Mets games you're looking for. Also, you can get concerts, uh, comedy shows, music. There's so many more ways that you can utilize Game Time to get tickets to events, and they're the place to go for last-minute tickets. I no longer get my tickets until right before I walk into the ballpark. I pull open the game time app. I scan around for the best deals I can find. You can look at the view of the seats by clicking on it, see exactly what to expect before you arrive. And you can see the all in pricing up front so you know exactly what to expect without any hidden fees. You can find zone deals to get really good deals where they'll assign you a seat and a given set of sections and you can save 20% off potentially. Really good stuff that you can find at game time to make sure that you get into the ballpark as cost effective as possible. Again, the place to go for last minute tickets. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with game time. Down the game time app, create an account. Use the code locked on MLB for $20 off your first purchase. Terms do apply. Again, create an account. Redeem the code locked on MLB for $20 off. 
Down the game time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. If you want to stay up to date with all the latest in the world of sports, make sure you check out Locked On Sports Today, streaming 24 7 on YouTube. All right. So the second base situation for the New York Mets is a very fascinating one. And one that I will just own right now, I've been completely wrong about on this show on multiple fronts. So the first one is believing in Jeff McNeil. I got swayed on Friday. Go back, listen to Saturday's show. I was all in, and I was completely wrong about Jeff McNeil. I thought he figured something out. I really believed. And that's because he's a two-time All-Star, and I said on that show that Jeff McNeil has the highest ceiling of any potential second baseman the Mets have in the organization for this season. I said even higher than Acuna or Iglesias. And the reason why I said that is because Luis and Acuna, if he comes up, when he comes up, he's a rookie. And it's not always easy for rookies to just hit their stride right away. In AAA this season, Acuna had a really long period where he needed to learn at the level before he started to hit his stride at the end of May and throughout June. And he's playing really good baseball now. But to come up, I don't know how good he's going to be. Iglesias, I have felt like there's a limited ceiling there. Now, the dude's hitting 388 with a 423 on base and a 551 slug. He has a 974 OPS. So at some point, we might just have to accept that this guy's really good again. We'll see. But Jeff McNeil's the two time All Star. So I really felt like, all right, there's still that guy somewhere. And if you believe in, career norms, career averages, and a guy plays this bad for this long, there is a world where he plays way above his head down the stretch to make up for it a little bit. He never is going to drag himself out of the hole that he has dug himself into so far. But when he hit that home run, I thought, all right, maybe Jeff McNeil's back. Since then, he's looked awful. Now, granted, the Mets have been playing some lefties, but still, he has not hit at all in this series and didn't really hit after that home run in the Astros series. So at some point, you got to make a move. You look at Chris Taylor with the Dodgers. Very similar situation. A guy that just all of a sudden can't hit who got a contract. He's on a four-year, $60 million deal. That still has, I think, one more year after this one and then a club option. Similar to Jeff McNeil, though McNeil's got two more years and a club option. Now, Taylor was even worse than McNeil for a large portion of the season. On June 6th, he carried a 0.95 batting average. 198 on base, 107 slug. Awful. Over his last 11 games played since then, he's hitting 385, 448 on base, 731 slug. Now, 11 games since June 6th sort of tells you the playing time. Finding ideal matchups, still getting him some, some run. And the fact that these guys play a lot of positions, it allows them to still have some role in the team, even if it's the last man on the bench. So could the Mets have reached that point with Jeff McNeil where they want to bury him on the bench? I think it might be there. And there's a lot of circumstances that would be, that would lead us to believe that Acuna could fit this roster right now. First one, injuries. Stoney Marte's out. J.D. Martinez was out of the game tonight. He was a late scratch because he has an ankle injury. They don't think it's too serious, but are they going to really play with J.D. Martinez right now with bulky ankles where he's still waiting on some shoes from Adidas, some new cleats, and he bought some – Shoes on Amazon or something, and I guess he played in them on Monday night, felt fine, hit the big home run, then woke up on Tuesday, his ankle hurt, tried to take some swings before the game, and could not swing the bat because of that ankle. Are they going to play him in this series again? I think it's doubtful. Now, does that mean that Acuna's your DH for the next two games if he does come up? Not necessarily. He'd play the field, but when you already have Marte out, when J.D. Martinez could potentially be out for a couple of days, not necessarily an IL stint, but a couple of days out. When you have Harrison Bader crash into the wall, maybe at some point the front office that's been pondering whether they would call up Acuna say, you know what, screw it. And they got on the phone with Syracuse said, get Acuna out of there. We're going to bring him and we're going to call him up right now. He is on the 40-man roster. And getting a look at Acuna could be a very good thing before the trade deadline to just see what you have. Because if the Mets need to address second base, you'd like to know what you have with Acuna. So I really love how this front office has managed the prospects, managed the roster. And while I, here's another place where I have been wrong. While I have been saying for a while, I did not see Acuna joining this team until after the deadline. The more I start to think about it, the more it begins to make sense. 
And the reason why I was wrong on Acuna is because I've thought, all right, good June. Let's see him do it in July. And you want him to play every day. And I didn't see Jeff McNeil getting completely benched. But maybe that's what they're going to do here. Get him out of the lineup. Have him be your fourth outfielder, backup infielder, just utility man that doesn't get a lot of run. Play Jose Iglesias against left-handed pitching as they have been because while he's been unbelievable, there are some splits to look at. He had you know, big splits in the minors where he was great against lefties and just okay against righties. And so far at the big league club, he's hitting 467 against left-handed pitching, 500 on base, 633 slug, big double in the game tonight was against a lefty. Granted, home run in the prior game was against a righty, first home run he has this year. And it's only been 19 at bats, but he's hitting 263, 300 on base, 421 slug against right-handed pitching. Now, Acuna also has interesting splits that factor into a potential platoon because Acuna has hit better against right-handed pitching than left-handed pitching this year. 275 average versus righties, 246 against lefties, 320 on base versus righties, 333 on base versus lefties, 400 slug against righties, 279 slug against lefties for whatever that's worth. Now, again, maybe Acuna was just hurt. Maybe Acuna was just dehydrated. Could have been a million things why they decided to pull him. But the timing of pulling him from the game at all, when he had already taken four at-bats and just had already played the field for pretty much the whole game, you just call a pinch hitter in the ninth inning, that is a little bit suspect. It it, it makes you wonder. And if you aren't going to play Jeff McNeil, all of a sudden, there's a lot of playing time that can go to Acuna right now. So I didn't see the everyday role or the you know heavy part or the, the strong part of a platoon role for Acuna because I thought they were going to keep trying to let McNeil fight through this and try to get him right. But maybe they have come to the decision that Jeff McNeil just doesn't deserve any more chances, and rightfully so. If that's the case, Maybe Acuna comes up, and that would really change a lot of the dynamics on this roster. So I want to talk about that a little bit more in the next segment, as well as sort of preview the rest of this series, what's left here, um, and how the Mets can hopefully keep things rolling against the Nationals. So we'll talk about all that in just a minute. First, though, a word from our sponsors. Today's episode is brought to you by Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps on prize picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projection. You watch the winnings roll in. Get in on the daily action with your friends and become part of the prize picks community today. You can now win up to 100 times your money on a prize picks entry with as little as four correct picks. So you can turn $10 into $1,000. If you're looking for promotions, prize picks has got you covered each week. From lowering select player stats projections on Tuesdays to help your lineup hit or Getting your entry fees back if you have a losing lineup on Fridays. Download the Prize Picks app today. Use the code Locked On MLB for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Again, that is code Locked On MLB on Prize Picks for a first deposit match up to one hundred dollars. Pick more, pick less. It's that easy with Prize Picks. If you're an everyday listener to the show, make sure you become a Locked On Mets insider. This is our texting service where you get updates from me. Anytime some news breaks on the Mets, like if Acuna gets promoted today, the first place I'll go when I find out is I will go and I'll send out a text that the insiders can ask me questions anytime. You get the line of graphics sent to your phone each day so you know who's going to be in the starting nine. If you want to be a Locked On Mets insider, find the link in the episode description or to subtext.com slash Locked On Mets. All right, so if Acuna is called up, how would that reshape the roster? Well, first things first, Acuna would immediately become your best athlete on the team the fastest player on the New York Mets, the guy that you'd want on the bases if you need to steal a bag in a tie game late, that would be Acuna. He's got, I think, 27 stolen bases on the year. He would be huge on the base pass for the Mets. He's also a great defender. Could be a really good defensive shortstop in the big leagues, although Lindor's got him blocked. So as long as he's with the Mets, he's probably not going to see much shortstop in the big leagues. And that's why he hasn't been playing a ton of it this year. They've still worked him into short a bunch because we're not a bunch. They've split his time. He's played second base the most. Then he's split between shortstop and center field this year. And I think for shortstop, part of that is you want to make sure that you keep that tool refined because if the Mets decide to trade Luis and Helicuna at some point, 
other teams want to know he can still play shortstop and there's more value in that. Not to mention if for whatever reason, let's knock on wood and say all and cross our fingers. But if Lindor were to go down at any point, Acuna is sort of second on the depth chart as far as a guy that you would feel comfortable handing the reins to, to be your everyday shortstop. Now, second base, I think he has a chance to be not just a good defender. I think he can be elite defensively at second base. Center field got more than enough athleticism to play out there. Now, would he slide over to right if he was part of this team tomorrow or as you're listening to this today on Wednesday? Would they have Harrison Bader in center and Luis Angel Acuna in right? I don't know how good he's looked in center field if they would feel comfortable doing that. But just based on the athleticism, I think he probably could handle that. Moreover, though, I don't think that that would be the move because I think Tyrone Taylor is still going to get a lot of playing time regardless of this promotion. I got to say, as frustrating as it is for me to watch Taylor continually struggle against left-handed pitching, I have to also acknowledge that Harrison Bader doesn't have the best splits against lefties this year. In fact, I think he's hitting 298 against right-handed pitching. So it's been a problem across the team. Acuna has been better against righties and lefties this year. So he's not necessarily the solution, but at least he's a right-handed bat. Whereas right now you have for your other options in the outfit, if you didn't want to start Taylor or Bader for that matter, Bader can't play because of crashing into the wall. You have Jeff McNeil, Ben Gamble, and DJ Stewart. None of those guys is going to hit left-handed pitching particularly well. Gamble did have good numbers in AAA this year against lefties, but they haven't gone to that since he's come up. So I don't know if they really buy into it. If they were to make this move, I think DJ Stewart would get optioned because he has an option. He's barely playing. So I'd imagine Stewart would get sent down. Acuna would come up. Ben Gamble would be your fourth outfielder, maybe, along with Jeff McNeil, who'd also be the fourth outfielder. Both of those guys would you know, fill in in that capacity. Acuna could grab some starts in center. And I think he would start at second base against right-handed pitching. Iglesias would continue to start against lefties. I think that would be how they would break things up. And Acuna would give you coverage in center, second, short, in a pinch third base if they really needed him to. Trust me, if Mark Vientos can play third base, and he has been very good over there, I, I, I honestly believe that Acuna is the type of defender that can really be put anywhere as a good shortstop. And I think he would be able to hold his own, similar to how we saw Louis Guillaume playing third base, playing second base, playing shortstop. We watched him go all over the infield. I think Acuna has some of that in him. And in the long run, that could be the ideal role for him to be a guy that plays all over the place and is sort of, I don't know if you are familiar with Ezekiel Duran of the Rangers, a guy that can play center, shortstop all over. I see Acuna in a very similar light as far as how he can be utilized. More speed on the bases than Duran, um, but th that's the type of player I think he can be in the big leagues. So we'll see if they go to it. I, I don't know if this is definitely happening. It could be nothing. And if it is, well, maybe the topic of the show should have just been today. Jose Iglesias needs to start over Jeff McNeil. The, the overarching point and the reason why the show was titled the way it was today is that Jeff McNeil at this point, you got to be just running out of opportunities to keep forcing him into the lineup because it ain't working. And this is whatever, three days after me being bought in from a home run, but I'm willing to admit where, when I'm wrong. And I just don't know how much longer you can do it. Especially when you have a guy in Iglesias who is just on a tear. It gives you just as good a defense at second base, if not better. And when they put a lefty in the game, right? If it's a right-handed pitcher and Iglesias started, and yes, he doesn't fare great against righties, but he's been better than McNeil has this year. Well, when they go to a lefty late in games, well, there you go. You already got Iglesias in there where he's been dynamite. So it makes a lot of sense to me for the Mets to make the move for Acuna right now if they wanted to. But even if they don't, they have an option that's sitting on the roster to be the starting second baseman, and it's Jose Iglesias. Now, looking at the rest of this series, you're going to have another lefty, Mitchell Parker, on the mound on Wednesday. Christian Scott's going to return to the rotation, so excited to see him back. If J.D. Martinez doesn't play, I'd imagine you might get Terenz in there to catch and have Alvarez DH. They could have done that tonight. They could have got Alvarez off his feet, but they made the right call because Sean and I has been a different pitcher with Alvarez behind the plate, as has Jose Quintana, who's going to start on Thursday. So you know that Alvarez is going to be in there on Thursday. This would be a game 
to get him off his feet. But with a righty on the mound, I wouldn't necessarily want him out of the lineup. Or excuse me, with a lefty on the mound, I wouldn't want him out of the lineup. So maybe that's the move. You also know that on Friday, Severino is going to pitch, and Terenz is sort of his personal catcher at this point. So that would probably be a straight off day for him, assuming J.D. Martinez is ready to go offensively. So that's where all that stands. I don't expect Bader or J.D. Martinez to land on the I.L., though I don't know if either of them will be in the starting lineup. And the Mets are going to try to win a series on Wednesday and hopefully keep this thing rolling. So we said this is a stretch where the Mets can really create separation, and calling up Acuna right now would indicate some urgency from the front office that he is a better player than DJ Stewart right now, um, than Jeff McNeil potentially, a better player for the roster that fits that, that makes things just more competitive. And if he doesn't hit, he doesn't play well, he's at least going to give you defense and speed. And when Starling Marte is ready to return, Acuna could be the guy that's sent down. So uh, a lot uh, of excitement or intrigue going into the day today. I wonder what's going to happen. And whatever does, I'll be breaking it down on tomorrow's edition of Locked on Mets. So make sure you check it out. If you are listening today, make sure you follow, rate, and review wherever you get your podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, hit that subscribe button for me. I want to get to 9,000 subs by the All-Star break. So we got two weeks to get a lot of subscribers. I appreciate all of you who subscribe. We're about 100 away. So everyone hit subscribe. Uh, that gets us just that much closer to the goal. If you want to follow me on X, you can do so at Finkelstein Ryan. Follow the show at Locked on Mets. If you want to be a Locked on Mets insider, find a link in the episode description. Go to subtext.com slash Locked on Mets. Uh, thank you for making Locked on Mets your first listener, your first watch every day. Now for your second watch. Head over to YouTube and check out Locked On Sports Today, streaming 24-7. This is the place to go for all the latest in the world of sports. You can also find Locked On Sports Today, streaming 24-7 on Amazon Fire TV.